why Alabama AD Greg Byrne didn't want another Nick Saban. Harkening back to my earlier YouTube days, the, the title that I would give to something like this would be Byrne didn't want another Nick Saban, which is true because the quote that he gave to Bama online was, I think if we tried to hire somebody that tried to look and act like Coach Saban, it probably wouldn't have been good. There's only one Nick Saban. All of that is categorically correct, right? We understand this. It also kind of gets back to why there will never be another Nick Saban and just what college football is experiencing right now. Now, that said, he made it sound like they weren't going down his tree or they weren't looking for somebody that had similar characteristics, and that's not exactly true, right? We know Steve Sarkeesian was a name that they called and they were interested in. We know that Dan Lanning maybe had been at the top of the list, another dude that comes off the tree. The guy that I thought had the best opportunity to not name Kalen DeBoer to get that job was actually at Florida State, Mike Norvell, and that made a lot of sense. Number one, Norvell can recruit his hell, his butt off, right? Number two, look at what he's been able to do in the portal, how he has adapted Florida State to this current climate in college football. And finally, for me, look at what he did last year with a Florida State team that people still say was not very talented. They still went undefeated in the ACC, and they still win, won the ACC title, right? Jordan Travis doesn't get hurt. Do they play in the college football playoff? I don't know. I, I still don't know, right? I think they should have been in there regardless, but after Alabama unseats what we thought was the unseatable Georgia Bulldogs, yeah, okay, that's that's a really difficult argument. It's the reason why we're extending the playoff from 4 to 12, right? So we don't have to run into that anymore. But on all of that, I think going to a guy like Kalen DeBoer, smart, but it also, there's not a great way to look at this if you are not at Alabama, right? We've been saying for years that nobody should want to follow Nick Saban at Alabama because you're going to be compared to the last guy. That's just what it is. Even when people say they're not going to do it, we're going to look at how good Alabama was, and we're going to see, are you hitting that standard, or are you doing something beneath it? In Alabama, they got a quick trigger, right? They in it to win it. However, after Lloyd Carr decided to retire, a Michigan man that won games, won the national championship, Michigan went the other way. They went all the way to the left, and they hired Rich Rod. Okay, that ain't go well. All right, we can all we can leave it there. It just ain't go well. Then they went all the way back to the right, and they hired Brady Hope, Michigan man, but that ain't go well neither. They ended up settling on another Michigan man, but one that could absolutely coach his butt off in Jim Harbaugh, and even took him five years to get that thing on the good foot. Okay, took him another three after that to win a national championship, two after that, to win a national championship, right? We get all of that. I'm curious to find out how this plays in a year, in 18 months, in two years, as Greg Byrne is doing this. On top of Nick Saban is out here saying stuff, guys. Like, have you have you, have you been paying attention to Nick Saban since he decided to retire in January? He has things to say. He's going to be doing game day. He's going to be going to Congress, giving his opinions. I thought it was interesting that earlier this Tuesday when we are doing this live show, Nick Saban was part of a roundtable in Washington talking about the state of college football and NIL and basically all the ills, as the old would like to tell us, that are coming to the sport that they once loved. He said, look, 50 years of me coaching college football, college athletics has gone out the window. It no longer matters. He recounted a story. That Miss Terry told him, and, and I love that he talked about them as we were tired. Like, it's always been a we with them. It's never been a him. It's always been a we. And I, I really valued that. But they would have recruits over on Sundays, and she would entertain parents as he would talk to players. And at the end of one of these, not too long ago, Miss Terry went to Nick and said, all they care about is how much money you're going to pay them. We got into this to help mold young men into good men. So why are we doing this? To which Nick didn't have a great answer and they decided to retire because we live in a world where apparently coaches asking how much money they're going to get paid for 155 years of college football is just fine. But players asking how much money they're going to get paid is a problem. A is hypocritical. B just say you don't want to pay them. Okay. That don't, don't hide. Right. Don't hide behind character. Don't hide behind raising good people. Good people get hired and paid. 
I've been doing a lot of growing up since I got to Fox Sports. I also get paid for my time. You understand what I'm saying here? You know, like you can do both and it's fair to do both. But I also think this is a bigger conversation that we're going to get into on our Thursday show as we talk about what the athletics and money have to do with all this and where this money is coming from and how much the kids are getting paid. But I'd leave it at this, right? When we first got the NCAA into the television business, it was actually a Yale athletic director named Robert Hall who put all this together. By 1955, he was saying that TV money was going to wreck the sport. So we've been essentially telling that lie for the better part of 70 years. Nah, man. The only thing that is changing is that old folks are watching their traditions go out the window. They're seeing that players don't want to come to their school. They want to come play for the coach. They want to get paid for their time. If you got a player that really loves being in college football, cherish that dude, right? He'll be around. He'll show you an HVAC unit. He'll show you a car. He'll be around. But if you don't, hey, man, did you win? Is that what it's about? Because if it's about more than that, I got to tell you, this sport's going to let you down as we are extending the playoff and the money is getting to be absolutely enormous. So much so that some guys don't even want to enter the NFL draft. They'd rather stay in college and collect a check. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.